Hey folks, Justin at Metcalf Mills. Today we're heading over to Crossville, Tennessee to pick up a grist mill. I'm glad you're going with me. I've also got Billy and William here today from Perma Pastures Farm. So it's always great to spend time with them. Gonna have a lot of fun as always. We're driving through the mountains of North Carolina, a place we love, beautiful. It's a great day. This mill is in the back of an old store building that belonged to this lady's grandpa and they think we're gonna have to disassemble the mill to get it out of there we're gonna find out when we get there but uh, this will be something that I'll restore for them I think their ultimate plan is to put it on a trailer and with an engine and maybe do demonstrations I don't know exactly uh, how much of that I will do if I'll do the whole uh, trailer and everything or if I'll just restore the mill for them but either way it's gonna be a lot of fun to see it progress and I look forward to sharing it with you all right folks we got a little detour here we was heading towards uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, and thought about our buddy Sean, the modern yeoman. So we hollered at him, and he's got a free day today, I guess, so we're going to swing by and pick him up. So this is going to be one big, fun YouTube collaboration right here. So we're we're all excited about it. Well, hey, I just got you some snacks that I thought you might like. <laughs> Check that out some wrap snacks. That's my bro back here. He's <laughs> keeping me up on the snacks right here. What on earth? What flavor is that? Here's another one. <laughs> Barbecuing with my honey. Look at this one here. Oh yeah. It's a little boozy. Cardi Dude, I don't know who, it, who are these people. Hey, here's Migos. Doing, sir, how are you? Thanks for thanks for backtracking and picking up. Wait, I'll tell you what. One of these days, I'm gonna get myself. Right now, I just need my dad's. Saying goodbye to the Yostead, right? Yostead. <laughs> How's it going? Going yeah, well. Okay. Like they built that house in '45. Okay. And. Um, so I was born here in 57, not in the house because somebody had set today, but in Crossville. So it's 30 acres on this side and 10 over there. So we came up here, we started fixing up. This was an old grocery store. So in 1965, they built this building and had a little country grocery store. This is mom and And then, um, so it, it didn't change a lot for the years. It, in fact, the whole place set like it was forever. And then we got here and started fixing it up. Grandpa, they shut down the store and then he decided to get into the grist mill business. So the grist mill had been here, I guess, golly, I guess it's been here since 1970. And so when he quit doing the store business, he started grinding corn two or three days a week. So he actually, there's an article in the paper I'll share with you about, it was called Greer's Grist Mill and he actually ground it. And, but Grandpa was quite of a uh, unique character. Here was the grocery store. Oh yeah. And in fact, the old cash register that had been here was still in here. I don't know where my wife, oh here it is. No, it's not. Seriously, when you get into a 700 square foot house, there ain't much sitting room. Sitting room. That's right. Yep. He said that's the original counter out of the store. Oh, the counter where yeah. they transacted yeah, business, I guess. There you go. I've ever seen was bigger for a rabbit. My grandpa and my dad used to trap rabbits with apparatus like this. It had a box. And it had, they would put a forked stick in the top of the, up outside the box. And this worked just like that. Oh, and so that was the trap door? This is the trap door. So they'd pull it down, stick an apple or something that the rabbit wanted on this end. And there's usually a little notch there. 
and they would hook the notch on the box. So when the rabbit pushed on this bait, it would unlatch that and it would let that door fall down on the other end of the box. Wow. But that must be for rats because it's oh, is that? that size it is. Grandpa. Wow. And to wash them. I thought there's dirt in there. When I shook it out, it was a bunch of dead mice. This is the meal paddle that was used to scoop the cornmeal out of the box and put it in a bag. See, it's got a place it's for a your thumb hole. and your hand. Yeah. Huh. Uh, Y'all may, actually, I guess he would hook the tractor up outside here. Yeah, that's his jack shaft right there, that red, right. see that red shaft right there? That was how he would hook it to the PTO of his tractor. That was okay. so cool. Billy over here. This shaft going out, this is his PTO shaft. It would have hooked up to the tractor. The shaft coming in on this gearbox, as the tractor PTO turned outside, it come into this gearbox to turn this pulley to the, which ran the mill. Here. Yeah, your maybe. grain goes up here and it funnels down, Sean, to here and that's a the feed adjustment right here you turn this and it raises and lowers this cup and this whole this is called a shoe this whole thing is shaking like this by way of this eccentric over here off of the main shaft it moves this up and down which moves the shoe back and forth he's got that to keep varmints out of his meal there so another homemade deal yep so that's shaking and when you when you turn this knob it raises this feed cup up so that the grain can flow out from under it. Grain comes down, falls down here. This is a suction fan and the way it works there should be a screen right here so the fan is creating suction. As the grain falls down the fine particles of which is prairie carp and what comes off of the grain would have been drawn up through this and blown out over here which is why he had that bag tied on. That was the discharger. Two stones inside. One is stationary and one's a runner stone. So as that shaft's turning, the runner stone is on this side. The stone over here is encased in concrete inside this half of the box. Okay. And the screw back here is what you adjust. And what that does, it's got a thrust bearing and it moves the shaft in and out so those stones are closer or farther apart. So does that determine the if you're grinding, what you're grinding? If you're cracking corn for chicken feed or you tighten them up to grind grits and fine cornmeal. So that's what you do. You adjust it to make it either grits, what you cornmeal. Want, yeah. or, and then does it discharge there? It comes out right here, yep. Okay. So all you're getting over here off this fan is trash. That's right. That's just the fine stuff. What tracks the belt and keeps right the there. belt on these old flat pulleys is the pulley is, is crowned in the center. That's awesome. It's, 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 it's yeah, a bigger it diameter in the so. center and that belt kind of rides yeah. around it and that's what keeps it tracking true. That was my pulleys. grandma. Okay. I was like, this is my grandfather, Rufus, and that's my grandmother. And then this was a neighbor that just lived down the road, Mr. Cordell. Plug it in. I like how no one responds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm watching. <laughs> we get that hopper off, we can stick it right back in the same place. Well, this bolt I'll just put right back in the bed. Okay. We're going to have to remove this hopper because it is wider than the mill and it will not go out the door. So we're going to remove the hopper, turn it up to take it out the door. The mill should fit out the door fine, minus the hopper. This particular mill is a Williams mill and it was built by Williams Mill Company at Rhonda, North Carolina. And they only built mills between about 1916 and 1927 when Meadows Mills bought them out. The serial number right here, I will, I got a book at home, I can look that up and find the exact year it was built. Let me, let me, let me, let me, you guys got it? Should be fine. I've got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thing about all of being I know, you know exactly understand. what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I guess right here is good. Got it. That doesn't fit. I'll pick that. Just, oh. It's a little squeaky. 
This one right here. Doing all the work. Oh, that just pops right out. You know, that side did, but this side's being stubborn. You only have to take this and off. Well, actually, just get it loose. Yeah. You need a hand and, this and the, the, the important thing is we're making this piece lighter to get out the door. Oh, yeah. Is this, is oh, you can see the it's like the big deal. reveal. And True to the side like the red right red here. Line <laughs> see what grandpa oh, there it is. connected back here? Yep. Well, uh, I don't know if we're going to have too much work on dressing this. Wow. That is cool to see. Fill them right here, Will. How they're yeah. slick. Is that good? That's what you don't want. But it, I oh, mean, really? it's, that just needs dressing. That's oh, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah. You want them rough? They'll be like real coarse sandpaper. Is how they'll feel if they're good for grinding. I feel how it's kind of yeah. sick. I call that tombstone when it gets polished. Like so that's when it, they were just too close together. And yeah, this wore out from grinding. So he just never did any maintenance to it, hardly. Well, he didn't on the last anyway. Yeah. For saying this old corn meal right this here. This is the tools we use. Oh, okay. This is a meal pick. It's a it's a very old tool, and this is a modern. It's called a bush hammer, and it's got a carbide tip on it here. This end is carbide, and what that allows you to do is, you know, when you hit once, it's got 25 points, so it's hitting 25 spots, and it makes the job go a lot faster. I which bet. is not fast, but it still goes <laughs> faster. But this is, you know, for cleaning out the grooves. You can only use this tool to dress stones, but like I say, this one helps a lot, makes it easier and faster. But you just you just uh, tap the whole process. I'll just tell y'all how it works. I'll paint the two stones with food coloring, put the meal, let it dry, put the meal back together, run the meal, and just let the stones barely touch. And then when I pull it apart, I'll do that for maybe five minutes. Just lightly let them touch, just like that, in and out. Pull it apart, and you can see the high spots, the food coloring will be gone where they touched. They put this auger on, so when the corn falls down here, this auger will catch it and force it in here. Mm -hmm. It'll okay. force it into the stones to be ground. Okay. The old engines and stuff, they would have this pulley already there. And a lot of times what they would do is put a belt between the two and leave it real slack. Yeah. And then they had an idler pulley that hinged and that would just fold down on the belt and put enough tension to make it run. When you were ready. Yeah. You could drop the idler pulley on It was like a clutch, there. yep. Just the weight of that idler pulley laying on the belt was enough. But these wide belts, they get a lot of surface contact so it don't take a lot of tension to keep them keep running. Keep them going. Right. What's that old gearbox? Who made that old gearbox? I don't know what that thing is. It was in an old trash can. Well, if it's never got too hot. You can see on this wood inside this case, that's just kind of went with the grain and just uh -huh. wore out. That's from that corn, corn meal, meal constantly. Just corn meal is like, it. yeah, eroding it. It's just like sandpaper. It just keeps eating that wood. I've seen them with a hole clean on the outside just from where that sandpaper is eat the wood away. Well, you got to think about that's pretty abrasive it stuff. It is, it is. Well, what I do when I restore these meals is I'll line that with stainless. Yeah. And you never have another problem. That's what I was thinking. That would make so much sense. Yeah. How you doing? So far, so good. All right, so we're going to line it up with the door, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> John Burns. Talking about guineas or chickens? Guineas. 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 Guineas are smarter than the guineas. Everything's smarter than the guineas. <laughs> with that you say, hey, this will work the best. Okay. I think that's what we need to think about. That this is going to work good because I'm not going to like have a, it's going to stay on the trailer for even if we take, put it up in the barn and sit there and do work with it. So, yeah. So it will not be moved to be permanently mounted or anything. It'll right. stay on the trailer from now on. Okay. What does it mean to you to have all this history brought back? Mm -hmm. You know, the thing is that, that 
so much of the growing up here and you know 64 years I've been coming here and uh, you know when you're a kid you look at stuff and you're thinking oh man that's just a what's he up to now and now as an adult you know to come back and live in the house when I was a kid and and to be here and, and to see that we can bring something that that was a very important part of his life my grandfather loved doing that and and people around here um, love to come over here and get their their corn ground and you know it's something you can continue on and even hand down to our grandkids that they might take it and run with it because they come they're coming up this week and they love they, they love coming up here and I think that's another thing that we don't do any of that anymore to plan any history in our kids and I think that's so I think that's what we're doing is trying to do something that rather than just cast it away or mm -hmm. sell it and say oh let's let's bring it back to life and people can come in here and go oh yeah i remember when your grandmother made me a sandwich up there oh yeah one of them told me one day he said oh yeah i remember when his kid would come in here and your grandpa would get onto us for holding the the cooler door open when he's picking our hmm. ice cream out he'd say close that door you're letting the cold air out you know like, <laughs> but it's um it, it's been a it's been a unique journey for sure i mean just over the phone i like justin just talking to him over the phone <laughs> so i was excited when i knew he was coming here because i knew he was going to get the vision of what i was trying to do because if you didn't have a justin that thing would be a piece of scrap there's nothing else you could do with it and uh, so yeah that that changed the whole uh, trajectory of what we're going to do with the thing because now we can do something with it and he even gets the vision on putting it on the trailer and making something happen with it it's been a real joy yeah me sure too has. you guys are all awesome i really appreciate you coming over thanks for having our pleasure thank you and so let much let me get Good a to meet you. Nice to meet you. justin's band of merry misfits yeah <laughs> <laughs> all of them yeah. there you go thank you again thank you. my pleasure Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this trip, going to get this meal with us. Uh, I want to say a special thank you to Billy and William from Permapastures Farm. If you don't know them, you need to check them out. And also to the Modern Yeoman. Thank you, Sean, for your help on this as well. Uh, there was a misunderstanding when I spoke to these folks on the phone the first time about whose grandpa it was, and I just wanted to clear that up. It was not her grandfather's meal but it was uh mr greer's grandfather's meal so this will be an ongoing project i don't know how soon it'll be coming up it'll be a while on this particular meal and the reason is i've got so many other meals and meal projects coming up first which i have not filmed because i had not started filming when i got these projects so there's a bunch of them that you have not seen that i'm going to be working on and i'll share that with you but this particular project will be coming up and you'll see how we set all that up they uh, gave me the go ahead to put it on an enclosed trailer set it up with the engine so it's going to be a really neat project start to finish this is justin at metcalf meals if you will like this video subscribe to my channel and you can see this meal and a lot of other meals uh, go through the restoration process and become a good working machine again thank you for watching i'll see you next time